Hello, so to, today's lesson is going to be how to make this little house on a program called Chief Architect. This will be your first assignment using Chief Architect, so it's a pretty easy little structure to build. It looks something like this. I'm going to show you a floor plan here to show you exactly what the um, size of the structure will be. So we're going to use this floor plan and uh, that other picture we just saw to create this structure. So I'm going to go ahead and um, get started with this program called Chief Architect. So once the program is open, you'll see an icon on your desktop. Go ahead and click New Plan. And then we're going to quickly take a look at our floor plan. And our floor plan we see has exterior walls that are 20 feet wide and 30 feet uh, in depth. So I start out in Chief Architect by going to the top of the screen, and I have wall tools right here. And if I click the down arrow, you'll see there's several different types of wall tools. And we're going to start with just a straight exterior wall. And I'm going to click and drag with my mouse to the right, and you see there's a dimension there, about 20 feet. I'm not worried about getting it perfectly uh, accurate right now. And I'm going to do about 30 feet right there. I click and continue, and you can see the little cursor up to line everything up. And now we have basically an, uh, a perimeter of the house. I'm going to go up here to this little white arrow, my selection arrow. I'm going to click on any wall. So if I click on a wall, I can adjust a, a dimension. So if I see right here, it says 29 feet 2 inches right here. This wall is selected. So when I click this dimension to change it, and it says 29 feet feet two inches and also notice um, while I have this up there that there's a little um, little tick marks next to it the one tick mark is is feet and the two is inches so what I'm gonna do here is I, I think it was 30 feet from top to bottom so I'm gonna hit three zero and then put the foot mark and hit enter and you'll notice that the wall that's selected is the one that'll move and that'll always be the case now we need to get our width right now it says 21 feet three but I can't have this wall selected while I do that. Rather, I want to select one of the side walls and then click this dimension and then hit 20 feet and then hit enter. So now we have the uh, outline of our house. Let's go back and look at that uh, floor plan again. Next thing I'm going to do is get the rest of our walls done. So I could see that there's an interior wall that goes straight across the middle and one right here. This one says it is 16 feet to one side so I'm going to go ahead and click on my wall tools and now instead of an exterior wall I'm going to select an interior wall and I'm going to click and go across here and then use my selection arrow click on this wall because remember we don't want to move any of these exterior walls because they're already in place so anything we change now will be interior wall selection so I want that wall and I need this dimension to be 16 feet and I hit enter Look back at my floor plan for reference, and I can see I have another wall coming vertically here. It's 5 feet 7 from the edge of the wall, so I'm going to go ahead and drag that wall. And then I need to select this wall again, because remember, do not want to mess up with your, uh, your exterior dimensions. And this is 5 feet and then 7 inches. You don't even have to put the inches if you put it after the foot symbol. If you hit enter, it'll automatically do 5 feet 7 inches. And next, I see I have a wall that comes over here, kind of like this. For It's kind of like a little hallway, I think. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and do that wall. Something like this. Okay. And I think there's a little closet in this bottom corner. And I can draw that. And I'll, I'll adjust those dimensions here just in a minute. I'll do this one first because I see I have a dimension on it. And it says it is three foot four up and down by two feet nine and a half that way. So my selection arrow, I want to move this wall. So I click on that wall, click on this dimension, and it's three feet four inches and two feet nine and a half on this wall. So I click this wall, select this, 2 feet 9.5 and I hit enter. 
Now, another thing uh, you might notice on this uh, Chief Architect program is you just saw me uh, uh, zoom in and out. Again, on the uh, mouse, the little scroll wheel, you zoom in, in and out just like with 3D Max. It'll work that way for you. Also, if you hold that scroll wheel down, you'll have a pan and you can move your your house, uh, your walls, you know, anywhere you want so you can see it a little bit better. So let's look back at our floor plan and see where we are. It looks like we need to add uh, another wall right here, six feet from the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one. And select this wall. Select this dimension, and I want it to be six feet, and hit enter. And there we go. The next step we have, now that we have our, our walls done, is we need to start adding some doors. So I see I have a door here. A door here, a door here, and a, a different kind of door right there. So let's go ahead and add those doors. So first, to do doors, our tool, you looked at the top of where our tools are. This is our door tools. And for a regular uh, hinged door, which most doors are, I'm just going to click on it. And I'll put that door in there. I don't think I'm worried about dimension on that. I'm not. It's fairly in the middle is where we want it. If you want to move the door around, you can go up and down either way. If you want to go up against the wall... Or if you want the swing to be different, see this little arrow right here. If you click, if you get near it, hover over it, you see how it has a little rotate thing. I can click that mouse button and hold on, and I can I can change the swing to whatever I want it to be. I think where it was was what we needed to be, so we're gonna go ahead and stick with that. Notice one more thing. It says two six six eight. That means this is this door is two feet six wide and six foot eight tall. Six foot eight is a normal door height, and if you wanted to change that, you could just double click on the door and a little dialog box will pop up here and then you can change instead of 30 inches which is what two foot six is or 80 inches which is what six feet eight is 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 uh, you can just click and change those so I'm gonna leave it like that for now but in case you need to change them in the future that's how you do it we have other doors to take care of let's go ahead and um, do these two doors so I need to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to um, at that one more time they go in on the bottom side so I'm going to go ahead and click on my doors and I want one here and one there and if I look at them on the picture uh, like we just talked about with flipping the hinge I click on it here's my little rotate and I'm just going to kind of pull down on my mouse so that the swing goes up against that wall I'm going to do the same on this one just click and kind of pull straight down and there you go um, if I look at, I didn't think I put a dimension on this. I did not. So we're just going to make, kind of make this hallway just, just a little bit narrower. Something like that. And one more thing you might notice in here is there is a, an opening right here. And an opening without a door is just called a doorway. So uh, Chief Architect has a tool for that too. Go up here where the doors are, click the down arrow, and we click doorway. And then I can just click right in that opening. I don't know if it tells me a dimension or not. I don't believe it does. So I'll just leave it like that right now. And um, I'm going to move it just a little bit towards this door. Again, I didn't put every single specification in this floor plan. It's just kind of a learning tool, learning how to use the tools today. So that's a doorway right there. Other details we need to add to this house. Um, I need to do a bathroom right there. So let's go ahead and, um, you know what, before we do the bathroom, let's go ahead and do windows. So, windows. There's a window right here that's seven feet from the edge of the house. So, I'm going to use a default window right next to the, you saw that where the door tools were right there. Right next to it's the window tools. I'm just going to put a window here. And I have two windows here and one and two in the front. So, let me check that one more time. These two windows are in the hall or in the opening here. So I'm going to click two windows here and two in the front. And then we need to look at those dimensions. Again, I just clicked in the wall to make those those windows. Uh, this one is seven feet from the edge. So I'm going to use my selection arrow, click on my window. And you see that dimension right there. If I click on that one, seven feet, hit enter. And now that one is in the right spot. Uh, this one down here, we see this says four feet from the edge with two feet in between. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So I pan up. Remember, hold down on your scroll wheel. That will pan you up. So let's click on that dimension. Four feet, enter. And then remember when we had our wall selected and it would move the wall. If whatever was selected is going to move. Now, um, this window is still selected. So uh, if I clicked it again, it might move that. So what I'm going to do is, since this window is all set because it's four feet from the edge, I'm going to select this window now. And that's the window that we're going to um, select the two feet in between. And that way, this window never moved the dimension in to this one. So remember, whatever you have selected, that's what's going to move. Keep that in mind when you're um, operating this program. Um, on these windows in the front, looks like I didn't even put dimensions, so we're not going to worry too much about that. I do see that there's a door in the front. And we already know how to make doors. We go back to our door tools. And I click in here. And notice how it says 3068. That's an exterior door because it's on an exterior wall. And exterior doors are a little bit wider. So 30 means 3 foot 0 inches wide. So we have our windows. We have our doors. We have our rooms. We need to finish out a, uh, it looks like a bathroom and a kitchen. So let's go ahead and start with the bathroom. It looks like we need a tub right there. There's a library browser right here. It's already open in my program. If it's not, let's go ahead and close it. In case if yours isn't open, the way to get it back is to go to view and hit library browser, and it'll come right back up. And you can just type what you want to find out. So we uh, we want to find a tub right now. So let's just uh, we can put tub, and a lot of tubs will pop up. We can scroll through there. Um, standard tub looks good and I'm just gonna put that in there and you notice our tub is too big it goes right through the wall easy fix on this is we're just gonna click on this and on the tub and click and drag and we're just gonna make it fit in this wall right there let's make it a little bit shorter standard tubs about six feet um, we had that five feet seven so we'll just stick with that that just kind of basically the purpose of that to show you that we can adjust those tubs or any other object for that matter. We have a toilet and we have a sink, a bathroom sink. So let's go back there and do that. So um, go to our library browser again. I think I just accidentally dragged a wall real quick. I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete that. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to go to toilet and search them up. And let's see here. Just a regular toilet will be good. This one says elongated. Elongated is probably fine. Um, there might be like a standard toilet in there. I'll just go with that standard toilet. And I'm going to make the toilet right here. And looking back, uh, I have a sink right here, a bathroom sink. And a bathroom sink, or most sinks for that matter, have to be in something. They have to be in a cabinet. So we're going to have to make a cabinet. So I click on my cabinet tools up here, which remember here's your door tools, here's your window tools, here's your cabinet tools. So we're going to click right here, and it says um, 24, which means it's 24 inches wide. We're going to need a little bit more width to that, so let's just drag that cabinet out till it's about, let's go 36. And then I'm going to type in sink in my library browser, and I'm looking for a bathroom sink or a bowl sink would be perfect. And I just come hover over the, see how it, when I um, come to the cabinet, I'm just going to click in there, and it automatically puts that sink in there for me. So the bathroom is good. Now we need to move on to our kitchen. So our kitchen here, uh, it looks like, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let me, let me zoom in a little bit on this one there so we can see better. So our kitchen has a refrigerator one two three cabinets right there so let's do that wall first so I'll start with a refrigerator I can start typing the letters and it um and it will find it it's all alphabetical so I'm gonna go ahead and click right here and I made that refrigerator and then again quick reference pick so we're gonna go cat small cabinet bigger cabinet bigger cabinet and I can't see the I guess it's 24 probably a 36 and whatever that distance is right there so I go to my cabinets come right here there's one cabinet there's two cabinets 
Then I'm going to make this one 36 like the other one was. Maybe even wider. Maybe um, maybe a little wider because this is the main sink. Let's go 42. And then I'll go back to sink. And, of course, this sink might be a little bit different because it's not a bathroom sink. And you know how the sink is going to be different in your kitchen because you're washing dishes as opposed to washing your hands. So let's look for a sink for the kitchen. There we go, double sink. That would be a good sink for this cabinet. So I click in it. And then there is our double sink. Very good for washing dishes. Let's go to uh, cabinet tools again. And I'm going to click right there. And you notice when I did when I did this cabinet, see that little arrow? That means that's the front of the cabinet. And it was kind of a dead giveaway when, that, when the um, label was going this way. So if I want to move that, and I do, I'm going to click and drag. And I'll turn it this way. So that the front of the cabinet is facing here. Of course, this will be a corner cabinet because there's going to be cabinets over here. Actually, um, this cabinet would be like an opening right here to get through to the uh, to the oven. So, next thing I need to is a it's called um, not a stove. If you type in stove, I'll show you what happens. If you type in stove, you get wood burning stoves like in a log cabin. We don't want that. What we want is what's called a range. So type in range, and then now you will get um these what you would call an oven so apartment range is probably correct because this is a really small house we're building here so I'm gonna go ahead and click and make a uh, a put a range right there and then let me see what else we got cabinets one two three cabinets right there then we'll finish it off so I'm gonna go to one cabinet two and then a third one right here and then this one Again, it's not facing the right way. We want it facing in here. And you also notice that these cabinets didn't line up very well. So I'm going to move it in and line it up. There we go. So that looks uh, pretty good for our kitchen, as far as I can tell. I've got all the detail on that. Yeah, so kitchen is done and bathroom is done. Now we need to do a little bit of, um, a little bit of uh, labeling. So in labeling, we have a closet bathroom, kitchen, living room. So I'm going to go ahead and do the closet and bathroom real quick. So I click, pan, drag down, have my selection arrow. I'm just going to click in this space and see how it turns gray in there. Anywhere I click in any any space, it turns gray, which means it's closed off by a, a door. And now we can label that space. I double clicked it. And where it says room type unspecified, I'm simply going to click closet and hit OK. Next, we're going to come to the... Um, the bathroom, see I accidentally click on the toilet right there. Make sure you don't do that. Click in the in the space and then double click and then this will be a bathroom. So I'm gonna type or I'm rather gonna select bath. This is a bedroom, so I'm gonna go ahead and click bedroom and hit OK. And now down here you notice if I click on it, its whole area is selected. But in the plan you notice this says living room and this says kitchen. And you see these little dashed lines there. So what we want to do is we want to use what's called our room divider. And the room divider is something in wall tools. So I go to my wall tools, click the down arrow, and it says room divider. And what I'm simply going to do is just kind of drag straight down to the right side of that kitchen. And I can actually actually move it so it's kind of right line up with the cabinets. I think that's what I'm really going for. And then... You can double click in here, select kitchen, hit OK, and then over here, this is the living room, living room, OK. Now, I don't know if I, this could, you could click here and type in hallway if you want, I'll, I'll do it, hall, OK. And then also with these dimension, with these labels, see how it's kind of like, this label is kind of sloppy how it goes over the, um, cabinet a little bit. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. There it goes. This one doesn't look really nice. Let's move it up there. And the kitchen one's kind of over top of a cabinet, so we'll move it to the right a little bit. And that looks pretty good. We have everything labeled. So, our floor plan is done right now. And uh, we do have some other things to do because this house, if you look at it, it has a porch and it has a roof. We haven't done that yet. So, um, looking back at this porch, it doesn't look like I have any dimensions on it, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw it. 
to draw the porch in the front, you're going to use this room divider. We're already on room divider because we just used it. And I'm just going to click straight out, straight over, straight out. And then if I look at it, I made it 7 feet 7. Let's go ahead and make it 8 feet to make it even. And then on the width, let's go ahead and make it 15 feet. That's close enough. And, okay, let me look over here, make sure that our, yeah, it looks like it comes in from the edge a little bit more than what I did. So I'm going to um, move it in a little bit. And I think I'm going to move everything over a little bit. I'm moving my door over a little bit. Probably should have dimensions on that. So uh, let's go ahead and make that uh, two feet six, that window. And then, yeah, I think that'll be pretty good now. Two feet six, and then yeah, everything else looks good. As long as your door is to the right side of the kitchen, your windows look about like that. So, we don't have a roof yet. But that's one more thing we have to do. Also, this, we have to double click on it and make sure it's called a porch. That's what it is. Okay? So, we have a house. We don't have a roof. Time for a roof. So, up here, there's a little, uh, this little picture with a red roof on it. Double click it. And then when you have this roof build roof dialog box open, double uh, check the build roof planes and auto rebuild roofs and click OK. And we just have a roof. Now, what is it? How do we see it in 3D, like in the picture right here? So I showed you this in 3D. How do we get that in Chief Architect? Well, you're going to come to the top of the screen, you see a little camera. And you're going to click the down arrow on camera and click perspective full overview. And when we click that, you see there is our house and our roof. Of course, this roof looks a little bit different than what's in the picture. Because you see how it comes up to a point on the sides. That's called a gable. So to make a gable on the sides there, what we're going to do is go back to our floor plan. Say we have an extra tab now, floor plan tab, perspective over. You don't have to keep on making a new picture. So come back here where it says floor plan. And we're going to use our selection arrow. And I'm going to double click on that wall. And then when a wall specification comes up, we're going to select roof and check full gable wall and click OK. And because we have the automatic rebuild roofs, it's going to fix it. You see it already, the lines already are changing. So I'm going to double click on this side, do the same thing. Roof, full gable wall, OK. And now when we look at our full camera, looks like we have um, a porch. Now let me look one more time at this. It looks like um, I have some some supports for that porch. So those are called um, columns. So I'm going to type in column. And I probably just want, uh, I can pick any of these. How about the classic fluted column? They're, they're pretty nice looking. So I'm going to go back to our floor plan. And we need three of them, I think. There's one here, one in the other corner, and one somewhere about to the side of that. So let's go ahead and look at it here. And we have those columns. It looks a little bit different than what we did in the in the um, other one, but that's okay. One more thing I'm going to add here to this house. See how the bottom doesn't have any kind of foundation, so the porch looks kind of wonky because it's kind of floating. So to make a foundation, make it look a little more realistic, I just go to uh, top of the screen, build, and hit floor, and I floor, and I select build foundation, and I'll just um, always check automatically rebuild. And then I'm going to check uh, monolithic slab, all these different foundation types. Just check monolithic slab. Hit OK. And you notice now this house has a foundation under it and it looks complete. So this should complete the process for your um, sample house, the first house. And hopefully you learned a little bit about Chief Architect in the process.